in order to communicate over distances, um, it's very useful to have a messenger or a middleman or someone that that um, where there's a client relationship. Mm -hmm. If the middleman is um, a white hat guy. <laughs> He's going to ethical middleman. Mm, he's he's going to ethically try to uh, render a service. Um, in classical times, you have something like um, the uh, the notary, mm -hmm. right? Which is basically a third party that is I important in, in order to uh, create trust between two uh, trading parties. Mm -hmm. And I mean, sometimes uh, in classical times, a middleman would have skills that enabled uh, communications and transactions to take place that were impossible, would be impossible without the middleman. Say, uh, two people who didn't speak each other's languages would need a middleman to communicate. Every time you've got something that's not self-sustaining, every every time you've got trade going on, mm -hmm. uh, every time you've got any refining going on, there's going to be a middleman. There's going to be a uh, a customer. And there's going to be someone supplying the raw material. Mm -hmm. So, no matter if you're talking about um, a butcher or um, a blacksmith or um, a stockbroker, there's always going to be a broker. There's always going to be a middleman. And what's important is that the middleman is supposed to infer trust. Just like money is supposed to be something you can trust, mm -hmm. but the system has been moving further and further down mm, a, a natural development because the middleman knows that the the less informed his clients are, he's always going to have to. Mm -hmm. The less informed they are about each other and the real facts, the higher his profit and gain, or at least potentially the highest profits and gain. I mean, he has to insist on making a, a higher profit rather than being an ethical middleman. Exactly, and, and, and that means that he can manipulate everything. He can manipulate uh, artificial scarcity. He can uh, manipulate supply and, and demand mm -hmm. as he sees fit. And then if he is not even... <laughs> when you then go further up in abstraction, uh, to things like banking, he didn't even have to tell you how much gold he's got. And this is the whole history of money, and most people out there have seen this now. But the middleman is the important thing. He was supposed to be something that you could trust, just as well as the banknotes were supposed to be something you could trust. But in, 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 in prior times, in, in smaller communities, uh, certainly in rural communities, but also in, in, in ancient cities, uh, before they grew too large, before societies grew too large and, and you know too complex, uh, this was less of a problem because uh, well, people would talk and, and compare and, and like like you know today we have right, re reviews of products and companies uh, on the internet. Um, before that, it was just word of mouth, and and if something was fishy about a certain middleman, chances are that, that people would uh, would discuss it and it was much, yeah, but but easy, much easier to, uh, for the clients to strive for uh, you know, insight into the dealings of this particular middleman. Yeah, but, but you're missing a very important point because you're making this sound, sound like a nostalgia thing. This is about self-sustaining community. Mm -hmm. if, a, if a community is self-sustaining, there's no need for a middleman. That means that it's, it's a natural uh, negative growth. Right. That means that everyone will need to trade what they need. They need to share the produce, mm -hmm. or they need to make it last longer. And whether you're uh, making beer or uh, vodka or um, uh, uh, any type of um, produce that that would normally um, putrefy you can do things to it to make it last longer so it's got a longer trade value mm -hmm. but because it's self-sustaining locally and most local communities are they are handling most things using bartering and 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 local notary systems like uh the traditional exchequer system mm -hmm. is basically that someone puts in a uh, sack of grain, and then he gets a piece of paper that says 
sack of grain, and then he can trade that mm -hmm. in, in, in small pieces. Say, so, okay, you get half a sack of grain, yeah. and I get half a uh, bowl of sugar. And, and I mean, the crucial difference there is that since it is a local uh, environment, um, there's something upon which to base the trust. I mean, you know the miller, you know the person personally who stores the grain. Yeah, exactly, and you can go and see it, and, and, and you can uh, make deals locally, and, and, and because of the over-unity over uh, effect, because of the productivity of human beings, these local communities were so wealthy that they had a huge surplus, mm -hmm. that they needed to use that for something, and then you start to have higher degree or more abstract mm -hmm. trading going on, because they will then trade with the... Uh, bigger cities and uh, neighboring villages mm -hmm. and thus you start getting efficiency then you get s specialization yeah. and then that wealth that's being generated because the capitalist system is actually built to create wealth and being extremely efficient mm -hmm. this is what m many people um, that talk about wealth distribution don't really accept or acknowledge that the fundamental basis of, of trade is fact it is making things more e effective. Um, what happens is that someone starts stealing the surplus. Someone is siphoning things. Yeah. There's a parasit parasitical entity in the system. I mean, and that enabled by the fact that uh, the community is no longer local, it's become a uh, dual. Not too big to fail, but uh, too big to, to for everything to work on a basis of, of trust and, and in personal relationships, and, and so someone abuses the trust that uh, has become, you know, inherent trust in the system. It's a it's a lack of transparency. It's it's a lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. which is both a, a um, caused by abstraction and the whole size of things, but it's very much also based on. <laughs> humans' uh, natural laziness, because it's intellectual laziness. The, the fact that they don't even care about trying to get the information themselves. Yes. Not even going to the next village, not going to um, do the traveling and figuring out, is it really true when the traders say that to get the pepper, they need to burn the fields to get all the snakes out? Mm -hmm. These are the type of stories that, that was used to, to perpetuate the lies and and value things. Mm -hmm. Like tea being something extremely exotic. They had tons of it in India. Mm -hmm. They could, uh, it was almost like trash. True, but I mean, as I say, it's intellectual laziness, uh, and I, I would have to agree. Uh, and I've been studying that most of my life, actually. Um, but, you know, it's it's, I don't think it's very constructive to, to I mean, blame anyone uh, for that, really, because we, we have been born at this point in time into a system where these things have been going on for so long uh, and have become so complex, and, and the, the overarching myth of, of growth uh, as, as the necessary uh, driver of any human civilization and society has been with us for a long time. Um, and we are now with the internet reached this stage where we can communicate uh, freely, most of us. Uh, so we need to get into the, the habit of that and get out of the intellectual laziness and realize that uh, the kind of growth that we've been following for, for centuries, if not more, uh, is unsustainable. And the technologies and knowledge has been with us for some time and certainly there now, things such as permaculture, uh, to transition towards something more sustainable, uh, which would probably be decentralized and, and local in nature. Um, and it all comes down to individuals making that choice, starting that process, transition more sensibly before the unsustainable systems start breaking down even more and forcing us to do so with less preparation. Yeah, but it, it's, it, it comes down to not only uh, intellectual laziness, because there there is a lot of that going on, but it's also the fact that We've seen so many examples of um, the system's obfuscations and um, deliberate opaqueness. Mm -hmm. the, the best example that, that I remember where I got my eyes opened really was uh, uh, the mountains of meat and butter in the European Union. 
because they started doing this uh, agreement of uh, price control or um, uh, on agricultural pro uh, products, mm -hmm. and so they actually put aside the surplus. And it was discovered that these uh, storages were huge, and people got really angry. I think you can't just have huge storage facilities filled with meat that you aren't actually doing anything with. Why aren't you giving it away? Why why aren't you selling it or something? Why do we need to pay that higher price if you actually still have supply? Mm -hmm. That's not real. You are trying to cheat us. And what then happened was that the European Union officials figured out this is a bad system. Mm -hmm. We we have to uh, hide the over unity because this is bad. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're not going to get our fat profits. So in instead of having these storages then they started creating these uh, very abstract and very uh, complicated uh, subsidy systems yeah. where they're basically following not just human labor because that's just one part of it but also actual productive land they are paying farmers not to produce they are asking farmers to destroy a crop. A system that uh, historically originated in the United States and then was uh, you know, promulgated all over the developed countries for sure and, and I think it's you know, still coming into more countries as we speak. And that's why you can't trust anything they say. Even when they say things like permaculture is not sustainable because it's not able to produce as much food per acre as uh, real agriculture. Yeah, but your numbers from real agriculture or modern agriculture, are they even real? Are you manipulating those numbers mm -hmm. intentionally? Because if you're basing them on things like uh, averages with subsidies and all this, I'm pretty sure that, that uh, I can, uh, can outproduce uh, per acre on my balcony. Mm -hmm. 